Here are 16 signs God is trying to warn you about a narcissistic person in your life. Number one, a narcissist will have crazy mood swings which are used as an attempt to control others. The reason narcissistic people are so emotional and unstable is because they have learned to use their emotions like anger and sadness as a weapon to control other people. These types of people do the opposite of what we are taught in James 1 verses 19 through 20, which state, Let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger, for the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Number two, a narcissist uses the severest form of judgment on others while demanding the strongest form of grace from others. Jesus warned about this type of behavior through the parable of the unmerciful servant in Matthew 18 verses 21 through 35. In this parable, there was a servant who owed his master an unpayable amount of money, but the servant pleaded and then the master was gracious towards him. However, that servant then went out and demanded payment from another who owed him a much smaller debt. In Matthew 18 verses 32 through 35, it states, Then his master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. And should not you have had mercy on your fellow servant as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his master delivered him to the jailers until he should pay all his debt. So also my heavenly Father will do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother from your heart. A narcissist wants all the mercy, but doesn't want to offer any to others. Number three, a narcissist has delusional thinking and uses a revisionist history to make themselves legends in their own mind. One of the scary things about a true narcissistic person is that they can warp reality to their own desires. They actually believe they are the center of the world and start to alter reality to help fit this narrative. They will even change the facts in their own history to help themselves feel more legendary than they really are. For example, if they were a bench player on the high school football team, they will remember themselves as the best player who could have played in college but chose not to. May Acts 12 verses 21 through 23 be a warning. On the appointed day, Herod, wearing his royal robes, sat on his throne and delivered a public address to the people. They shouted, This is the voice of a god, not of a man. Immediately, because Herod did not give praise to God, an angel of the Lord struck him down, and he was eaten by worms and died. Herod was so narcissistic that he literally started to believe that he was a god. God put him in his place just as he will do to all prideful people who do not humbly give him glory. Number four, a narcissist attaches their own meaning to people's words to serve their own agenda. A narcissist will say things like, so what you're really saying is, or yeah, but I know what you really meant by that, or I can tell by the tone in your voice that what you really meant was, a narcissist is very much like the fool described in Proverbs 15 verse 32. Whoever ignores instructions despises himself, but he who listens to reproof gains intelligence. If someone just hears what they want to hear, no matter what you say, they could be struggling with narcissism. Number five. A narcissist will twist the word of God to serve their own desires. At the heart of all heresy is selfishness. Christians are called to obey God's commands even when we don't like them. In self-centeredness, however, humans try to avoid obeying God by simply changing what they believe God has said in his word. For a 2 Timothy 4 verses 3-4 through 4 state, For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions, and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. Number 6. A narcissist takes all the credit for the good and takes none of the blame for the bad. Essentially, the Bible states that all the bad in this world is because of human sin and all the good in this world is because of God's grace. The narcissist completely twists these truths and takes all the credit for the good and places all the blame for the bad on others. You can see this in James 1 verses 14 through 17. 
Number seven, a narcissist believes they are so favored by God that he will divinely punish others who the narcissist does not like. Think about religious wars or about racist cults who twist the word of God to try to use it as justification for harming others. Because they feel set apart and chosen in an unbiblical way, they feel free to harm people outside of their cult or racial group. This type of evil and disgusting hatred flows out of narcissism and pride. Ironically, God's true chosen one, Jesus Christ, did the opposite. Rather than seeking to divide, he desires to unite. Rather than asking God to kill everyone who hated him, Jesus actually died for his enemies. For as Romans 5 verses 8 through 10 teaches us, But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? For if, while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Number 8. A narcissist will try to turn other people against one another when it serves their own purpose. Romans 16 verses 17 through 19 explains this point well. It states, I appeal to you brothers to watch out for those who cause divisions and create obstacles contrary to the doctrine that you have been taught. Avoid them. For such persons do not serve our Lord Christ, but their own appetite. And by smooth talk and flattery, they deceive the hearts of the naive. Notice the divisions that they create are stemming from their own selfish desires. Here we can see that God wants us to avoid narcissistic people who do this. Number 9. A narcissist misuses resources for lavish personal pleasure and neglects the needs of others they are supposed to be caring for. Think of a mom who is dressed in the finest clothes while her kids are dressed in worn out clothes. Think of a deadbeat dad who spends all his money on partying and selfish pleasures rather than supporting his family. Think of a pastor who takes the tithes to buy a mansion while his church struggles financially. These are the types of things narcissists do. Number 10. A narcissist puts themselves at the center of everyone else's story. One biblical example of this is the brother in the story of the prodigal son. When the father and the prodigal son were reunited, the other brother said to the father, Look, these many years I have served you, and I never disobeyed your command, yet you never gave me a young goat that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fattened calf for him. This brother felt the need to be at the center of their story rather than accepting that he has his own story with the father. This is what narcissists do too. They get jealous when God does anything good in the lives of others. Number 11. A narcissist will have lots of conflict with normal people and can only coexist with extremely submissive-minded people. Narcissistic tendencies cause these types of people to gravitate towards enablers. A narcissist will seek to manipulate nice people who assume the best at all costs until the bad is so outrageous they can no longer deny it. 2 Timothy 3 verses 2 through 6 states, For people will be lovers of self. For among them are those who creep into households and capture weak women, burdened with sins and led astray by various passions. The general principles in these Bible verses are meant to be applied to both genders. Number 12. A narcissist has very few true healthy relationship attachments in their life because they are quick to cut off people who do not serve them. To have healthy relationships, you must form healthy attachments. When someone has the ability to just cut off anyone from their life at any time, this is often a sign of narcissism because when you are obsessed with yourself, you don't mind losing relationships with people who you feel no longer serve you. For as Philippians 2 verses 3 through 4 states, Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, 
business, but also to the interest of others. Number 13. A narcissist is painfully insecure and thus searches for compliments constantly. While narcissists are prideful and believe they are better than others, they do not possess a strong identity and are thus always hunting for affirmation from others because of their deep insecurities. You can always spot a narcissist because they are the ones who are craving earthly praise. As Romans 2 verse 29 states, And true circumcision is not merely obeying the letter of the law, rather it is a change of heart produced by the Spirit. And a person with a changed heart seeks praise from God, not from people. Number 14. A narcissist will often be marked by false humility, especially when they claim to be a Christian. Rather than truly being humble, a narcissist will try to portray themselves as humble to actually gain more praise from people. As Jesus said in Matthew 6 verses 2 through 4, Thus, when you give to the needy, sound no trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may be praised by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret, and your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. Number 15. A narcissist is often a compulsive liar. Do you remember how the chief priests lied about Jesus to Pilate in order to get him killed? Why did these religious men accuse Jesus with lies upon lies? In Mark 15 verse 10, we see that Pilate knew their true motivation, for he perceived that it was out of envy that the chief priests had delivered him up. Likewise, people who refuse to accept that Jesus is the center of the story and not themselves will be compulsive liars. And number 16, a narcissist will ultimately end up mad at God because they will feel God is supposed to serve them, but God won't do this. Eventually, God will put every narcissist in his or her place. The root issue in the heart of someone who struggles with narcissism is that they want to be God themselves. They want the one true God to use his power to serve them, but God will never do this, and those who seek to serve themselves always reap what they sow. Thus, one sign of all narcissistic people is that eventually they get mad at God because he will not do what they want. May we remember the humble words of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in John 8 verse 50. Yet I do not seek my own glory. There is one who seeks it and he is the judge. I'm Mark from ApplyGodsWord.com. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Until next time, God bless.